4th of March, 2020, at 1 a.m., I did something called DMT for the first time. <laughs> it fucking blew my head clean off. <laughs> like, the thing is, right, like, if you sat here now, I just want a little preamble for the people who haven't cheered and maybe don't know. I made up loads of people who have cheered, right? But if you don't know what it is, don't feel bad as well. I, I, I consider myself quite clued up on this shit, and I didn't have a fucking clue at this point, right? DMT is a psychedelic drug, right? And full disclosure, right, on stage, like, I'll be, I act like Billy Big Bollock sometimes. Oh, let's go and do MDMA, let's have a line or whatever. But in reality, I'm nearly 40 now. I've got two kids. I dabble a little bit, but I can't really fucking deal with the come downs anymore. <laughs> Psychedelics, though, it's something I've always been terrified of. I've always been that person who thought, if I have acid, I will jump out of a window, me. <laughs> I've always shied away from that shit. But for some reason, right, my mate comes to me on that day and he goes, hey, Paul, hey, got that DMT there, you know? And I was like, what the fuck's that? He went, it's methyl trip to me. I went, what's that? He went, it's the stuff your brain makes just before you die. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know why, I was like, yeah, but he was shocked, he was like, should I be a game? I was like, yeah, and he went, mate, I've had this for months, no one will do it with me. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. So the thing about it was, right, he's not some drug dealer or something, like, he's a clinical psychologist, me mate, right? <laughs> I've known him for years, so my reasoning was, if I'm gonna do a heavy psychedelic for the first time, a brain doctor, probably the man for the job, innit? A man of science. <laughs> and he was very reassuring on the car on the way back. He's giving me all the spiel on it. He's like, DMT, Paul, it's a naturally occurring substance. Your brain makes it, as such, really effectively absorbed by the body. So your trip will last about five, ten minutes, after which you'll be completely sober, you'll be able to drive a car. No chance of adverse side effects, no chance of overdose. And I was like, absolutely sound. <laughs> Let's go and see some mad stuff. <laughs> and he goes to mine. I walk in first, then I go into the living room. And I go sit down, he walks in behind me, he's been there before, so he knows. I've got all those like Philips Hue lights all through me, how's that change colour now? So as he walks in, he goes, Alexa, make lights pink. And all the lights go pink, and I was like, what the fuck? Right. And he goes, Alexa, play deep meditation music. And it just starts going, And I'm thinking, what the fuck is happening here? Then he walks right over to me, right? Stands over me, he's a big fella as well, and he comes right over to me, he puts both his hands on my thighs, he looks deep into my eyes, he goes, right, Paul, we're gonna do a guided meditation before we go on our journey. Because we need to make sure we're at the right frequency before we meet the spirits. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I've made a mistake here. <laughs> this is not a man of science at all. This man is in a cult. <laughs> and he goes, have you ever done any meditation, Paul? And I was like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. I, if it's for you, it's for you. And I'm made up for you. And it's not really for me. All that shit. I said, well, we'll fuck all that off. We'll just have it and see some mad stuff. And he was like, no, Paul. This is not magic mushrooms, mate. This is the spirit molecule. If you go to the other side at the wrong frequency, you're going to have a bad time. We're going to do some breath work. Have you ever done any breathing? And I was like... Yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> and he was like, you know what I mean, Paul? We're going to do some cyclical breath work. Activate the vagus nerve. We're going to do four seconds in, six seconds out. Four seconds in, six seconds out. So I was like, fuck, so fuck, fuck it, go on then. So I start breathing. And as I'm breathing, he starts going, right, Paul, you can feel your toes. Your toes are relaxing. Relax your toes. Are your toes relaxed? And I thought, <gasps> See how you know? <laughs> but then I thought, I've never known my toes not to be relaxed. <laughs> I've never once in my life thought my toes feel stressed out today. <laughs> my toes could use a little holiday. <laughs> but you know what? Fair play to him. Credit where it's due, right? He comes, he carries on. He comes up my legs, up, right up, to, up my back, down my arms, my fingers, back up my arms to the top of my head. So about six or seven minutes after which I let the last breath out and he was like, you feeling okay? And do you know what? I was. <laughs> and he goes, any anxiety? And do you know what? There wasn't. And I thought, fair play. Do you know what? Maybe I've misjudged all this. Maybe I should keep an open mind. Then he goes, okay, we're ready to go on our journey. And he pulls this bottle bong out, which 
If you don't know what it is, it's just a two litre bottle of water, which he has cut the bottom <laughs> off with a pair of scissors. Uh, he's got a bit of tin foil, which is made a little well, and he's got the DMT, it's like a yellowish powder. He's put some of that in the little well, then he's sellotaped that to the bottom of the bottle. So in about 90 seconds, he's gone from the Dalai Lama to a fucking crackhead. <laughs> And I can feel the anxiety coming back a little bit. <laughs> but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to do the fucking breathing again. <laughs> so, so I'm sat in this chair, right? And he goes, OK, I'm going to fill the bottle with smoke, right? You're going to take your first hit. You're going to hold it for about 30 seconds. After which, uh, I, I, I'll refill the bottle. I'll give you a second one. We're going to go for three hits and you're going to blast off. <laughs> and I was like, what? He went, you're going to blast off. <laughs> and I was like, OK. So I'm sat there, right? And he goes, fills the bottle up, he gives it to me. I take the first hit, but as I said, right, I've said a couple of times, my only frame of reference to smoking anything is weed, and weed is a very herbal taste, and this is not. <laughs> it's very chemically. So as I took that first hit, it shocked me, and it was very harsh on the lungs, and I went, <laughs> and I went to cough, and he went, no, no cough! <laughs> but I don't know if you've ever tried not to cough when someone tells you not to cough. <laughs> you go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> fucking came out of my ears and my eyes and shit. I was like, ah, oh, fucking hell. And he goes, oh, get the second one. So I took the second one off. And because I fucked the first one up, I tried to overcompensate with the second one. I hit that even harder. I was like, ah, oh, coughed a little bit again. I was like, shit. And he gives me the third one, right? He goes, get this one. So I got the third one. And I managed to hold that one. It was the mildest one of all three, right? And as I've let it out, I'm looking up at him. And, but he hasn't told me what to expect, right? He hasn't told me what was supposed to happen, which I feel like he should have. So I'm waiting, because nothing's, nothing's changed, it's pink and the music's on it, so it's a bit weird, but like, nothing's changed. And I'm thinking, like, I, I'm thinking, do I come up or something? Is it like MDMA? Do I sit and I feel buzzy in a minute? I don't know what's about, supposed to happen. And I'm looking at him, and he's like looking at me. And he, he, he looked down, and he went, you're all right? And I was about to go, I don't think it's work. But what I said was, I don't think it's, and as I said that, he just went, boop. And he just turned into a fucking cartoon. When I say he was a cartoon, I don't mean he looked like a cartoon. I mean, he was a fucking cartoon. And not just him, the whole world changed, and I've never seen anything like that. And I was like, fuck off, fuck off. What the fuck? What the fuck? And he was like, you're all right, I went, mate. You're a cartoon, you know. He didn't reassure me or anything. He just looked at me and went, yep. Right? He just fucked off and went and sat on my cartoon couch. And I'm like, that going flapping, going, oh my God, I'm a cartoon. I'm like, I fucking knew I shouldn't have done this. It's fucked up. I'm going to be a cartoon forever. And I'm looking at me, I'm like, I'm, just, I'm trying to stay calm, thinking he said it's going to be five minutes. It's going to be five buttons as well. Just try and keep your head on me. It's going to be five minutes, then you'll be all right again. It's just a DMC. You're not a cartoon. I looked at me and I'm like, I'm a fucking cartoon, mate. <laughs> I'm a fucking cartoon. And the floor was a cartoon and the chair was a cartoon. And I'm, I'm proper in a panic about it then. I look at Ed, right? In my living room, on the wall, it's been there since I moved in. I barely ever paid any attention, but there's just this abstract painting. It's just colours and squiggles. I just got it because it looked alright to me. But for some reason, that's the only thing that hasn't become a cartoon. So I see it and I go, <gasps> that's the real world. <laughs> there's the real world there. Stay with that, you're going to be alright. That's the real world. That Just stay with that boy, you're going to be alright. And as I'm looking at it, it's just getting more and more vivid. And it just becomes the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, <gasps> you seen this painting? You seen this painting me, mate? So like, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and as I'm looking at it, all the colours start moving, right? And they start swirling together. And it just made like this woman's face, right? And I was like, <gasps> and the woman just starts going, and like beckoning me in. And I got up and I was like, <laughs> and I got about this far away from it, and she just starts moving side to side, right? And I don't know why, I just felt like I, I don't know why I was just felt this connection. I'm just moving with her, like, like fucking Stevie Wonder. Then this little tear came out of her eye and I just felt overwhelming sadness and I was like, oh no! Big and sad. My mate's like, ooh. <laughs> and the tear rolled right down her cheek, right? And then as it dropped off her cheek, she went, hmm. and I just felt all the sadness going away. I was like, <gasps> <sighs> Peyton's all right, Peyton's all right, we're all right. <laughs> And I stepped back, right? And as I stepped back, I sat down. And as my bum touched the seat, everything just went whoosh back to normal. I was like, fuck off! Fuck off! What the fuck? What the fuck? And my mate was like, you're all right. I went, mate, that's the maddest shit I've ever seen in my life. That's the maddest shit. That's, that's fucking incredible. And I swear, he just looked at me and went, well, I'll be honest with you, yeah, I don't think you've done it properly. <laughs> and I 
I was like, what do you mean? He went, I don't think you blasted off. And I went, I think I fucking did, mate. <laughs> You've just been a cartoon and I've just had a full relationship with the fucking squiggle, so. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I'm glad you had a positive experience. We'll leave it there for today. I'll go on my journey now. <laughs> so he sits in the chair. I've got to do the same for him, right? So I load the bottle up and give it to him. So we fair to him. He's a pro. He hits it hard. He's a <gasps> then he sucked the fucking bottle and it was quite impressive, right? <laughs> then give him the second one. He hits that. On, give him the third one. On the third one, he told me to count down from ten, right? So I give him it. And as he's letting it out, he's looking at me. And I go ten. And he's full eye contact. I go nine. He's full eye contact. I go eight. And he just goes. <laughs> Just out cold, right? But he wasn't fucking breathing or anything. And he had not told me that was gonna happen. So I'm shitting myself a little bit because I'm like, fuck, he's dead. He's fucking dead, right? But he'd been very clear on this. He had said, right, while I'm under, don't make any loud noises, no sudden movement because it can spill into me trip, ruin it for me. So I, I want to check him to make sure he's all right, but I also don't want to ruin the trip. So just back away. And I'm just sat there going, don't be dead, 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 don't be dead. And it felt like forever, probably about 15 seconds, but it felt like ages, right? And after 15 seconds, he just went, and I was like, oh, thank fuck. And as I felt that joy of him being alive just wash over me, he just went, and I swear to God, right? He's fucking on my chair, and he's come up onto his shoulders and his toes like a fucking crab, and he's like, and I'm like, oh my fucking God. Because he's a doctor, he's a doctor. And all the way home, he's been like, I do not shake hands, something for you can't possibly. And now I'm watching this fucker, fucking Pulp Fiction in my living room at one o'clock in the morning. And I don't know what to do, he hasn't told me what to do. I'm like, do I Epi pen him in the heart or something? I haven't got an Epi pen, who's got a fucking Epi pen? And he's just there, ah, ah, ah. And I'm like, oh my God, mate, stop screaming for fuck's sake. Stop screaming, I've got fucking neighbors. One o'clock in the morning, man, I've got neighbors and shit, they're gonna hear you. And you're gonna die in my living room. What the fuck am I gonna do here? I can't even bury you, I've got artificial grass put in. And he's just, he's won't stop, he's just like, ah, ah. And I'm like, mate, stop screaming, stop screaming, stop screaming. Then he does stop screaming. And I fucking wish he'd carried on. Because it got so much worse. He's still up. He's up on his shoulders and his toes. Just all locked out. And he's like, ah, ah. And he just goes, ah, ah, ah. And his head spun round, right? And his eyes opened. But he wasn't there. Just jet black eyes, right? And he fixed my eye contact. And his arm just flew out and pointed right at me. And he just went, ah, ah. And your knees are a hold you and I reach you. Nisanafarajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwalawajiwal
And he was like, what? I went, mate, you've just been speaking to me in like devil tongues for like two minutes. You know, and he went, shut up. I went, you have? He went, lad, you've got to go again. <laughs> and I was like, nah. He went, mate, the creator of the universe has just been in your living room telling you to do DMT. Now, if you'd have asked me an hour before this, what my beliefs were, I'd have told you I was an atheist, not spiritual, not religious, but I don't believe in fucking energy. When you're dead, you're dead. Didn't believe in nothing. Now, after an hour of this shit, I'm finding it very believable. <laughs> that the creator of the universe has been in my living room telling me to do DMT. <laughs> that shit seems highly plausible to me at this point. And I'm pacing up and down my living room like, fucking hell, I don't want to do it again, but I like, can't say no to the creator of the universe. So I'm like, fuck it, fuck it, we're gonna have to do it again, we're gonna have to do it again. He's like, you sure? But yeah. So he goes, do it properly this time. I was like, I will. So I sat in a chair, he loads the bottle back up, fills it up, gives it to me. I took the first hit. I knew what to expect this time. Still harsh, but I managed to hold on to it, get the second hit in, and I knew it was gonna be different. As soon as I got that second hit in properly, the whole world just went wavy. And I was like, oh no. And I'm looking at him, he gives me the third one, right? And I take it. And as I took it in, I look, I, I breathe it out, and he goes, turn. Nine, eight. And the whale froze and I was like, oh. Then eventually he said seven, but as he said seven, his head split into two heads, right? And then he said seven again, his head split into four heads and that just kept happening out, it's like a kaleidoscope. Until eventually the whole room was just full of me, mate's head just going seven, 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 And I was like, ah! And it fucking freaked me out, so I closed my eyes to get away from me. And as I did that, I discovered what blasting off was, mate, because I closed my eyes and I just went, fuck off! I shot out of my body into a fucking rainbow, mate. A rainbow full of colours I've never seen before. And you know what? I didn't have a body and I didn't give a fuck. I was just like, I'm in a rainbow! I've never felt anything like it. I felt it because I was like, oh my God, I'm in a rainbow. This is amazing. And I'm flying through it, right? Then, as if that wasn't weird enough, right? Next thing, this giant black serpent thing just goes whoosh. Just cuts through the colour, just swings around me, then just looms over me with this big giant serpent head, right? But I wasn't scared because somehow, in some DMT telepathy language, he just told me he was sound. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't worry about me, man. <laughs> I mean, you know how. Oh. And I was like, okay. And he was like, keep doing what you're doing, Paul. Keep making people laugh. You spread positivity. <laughs> and I was like, I will. <laughs> and he was like, do you want to go for a ride? And I was like, yeah. Then he got me on his back and he took me on a ride like fucking never ending story. <laughs> Through rainbow rivers and rainbow mountains, it was beautiful. And I felt like I'd been there before and I was going back there when I died. And it was me and I was it and we were all connected and it was amazing, right? Then he comes back around and he goes to drop me off and he goes, don't be a stranger, man. I was like, oh. He was like, I love you. I was like, I love you too. <laughs> And I get off him, right? And as I get off him, I just feel myself just get sucked back into my body. And I, was like, <laughs> and I woke up like this <gasps> to my mate's face about this far away from me like that. <laughs> just so fucking happy. He was like, did you blast off? Did you blast off? And I was like, fucking hell, mate. Fucking hell, was that real? Was that real? That's fucking incredible. Was that real? I felt like that was real. Was that real? And he was like, what did you see? I was like, mate, you're going to have to give me a minute here. What the fucking hell just happened, man? I was like, right, you're counting down from 10. He said 10, 9, and he, then he said 8, and the whale froze for fucking ages, right? Then he said 7, and he then just split into two heads, and then four heads, he went like a kaleidoscope. I was like, yeah. He went, it's mad, innit? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. He went, then what did you say? I went, sorry, so I closed my eyes to get away from it. It freaked me out a little bit, right? And as I closed my eyes, I shot out my body into this like fucking rainbow. And he went, the colours are mad, aren't they? And I was like, yeah. He went, it's mad, innit? I went, then what did you say? I went, right, this is going to sound stupid. I feel daft even saying it, right? But I'm in this rainbow and I don't even have, I've got a little body. I don't know what's up with them what's down, but I feel fucking incredible. Then, next thing, this giant black serpent thing just comes out of nowhere, just swoops through the colour, right? Swings around me, just looms over me, this big giant serpent's head, but I weren't scared because somehow he just told me some DMC telepathy language that he was sound. Then he called me to keep making people laugh and spread out positivity and that. Then he took me on a ride through like rainbow rivers and mountains and that. Mad that, ain't it? He went, no, that's not mad. That's the cosmic serpent. I talk to him all the time. <laughs> And I was like, what? He went, yeah, everyone speaks to him. He's the origin of knowledge. I was like, fuck off. He went, Google it. I Googled it. He fucking is. <laughs> I don't know how that's real. I don't know how it's possible. But people have written fucking books on this cunt. And I just don't understand it. And my head's fell off. Then that's got to be the biggest change. Because fucking two years ago, I was quite a strong atheist. And now I worship a fucking rainbow stink. <laughs> Mad.
mad. And I like, much like the <laughs> people in here who've done it will understand that better than the people who don't. But like, if you don't believe me, honestly, I'll, I'll prove it to you. Yeah. Got him tattooed on my fucking chest. <laughs> there he is there. I didn't, honestly, I didn't have a fucking tattoo before I started doing this shit and I'm fucking covered in it now. I'm fucking, I mean, yeah, there's Bud there. I met him the second time I did it. He's sound. <laughs> there's some spacemen I met when I was doing mushrooms. <laughs> That there, that little evil joker, de joker devil thing. Apparently, that's my shadow self. We had an awkward conversation in a minute. Uncomfortable, but necessary. <laughs> there, there, she's the fucking, she's the main one. Fuck me. The third time I ever did it, right? I, I, people don't believe this about me, but for a lot of my life, I suffered with anxiety a little bit. I know that's like, I, just I, I, odd times it would come to me, right? And I've got one of them brains that fucking, you know, like, <laughs> it's probably why I've been scared of doing psychedelics. I've got like weird fucking intrusive thoughts. Like the first time I ever held my little boy, right? The first time I ever held my baby should be a beautiful moment. I got him in my hands and everyone's around me and the midwife's looking at me like, oh, and I swear to God, all I could think of was, it wasn't, oh, look how beautiful this baby was. All I could think of was, I'm gonna throw this baby. I'm gonna fucking throw this. I wonder how far I can throw this baby. <laughs> Fuck her! And I didn't throw the baby. But <laughs> and that's what happened. I was going into a third time, and my brain just went, hey, what if you had a panic attack right now? And I was like, Fuck. And I started feeling anxiety, and it filled my body, then it left my body, and it just filled the room. It was like an earthquake of anxiety, and I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be bad. Then, next thing, this giant blue woman just turns up, scoops me up, just sticks me in a womb. Absolutely fucking incredible. And I sat there just being cradled in this big giant blue mother earth womb. And I was trying to ask her all the questions. She went, why are you bothered, right? And I just laughed and she laughed and then she went, bye. Gave birth to me. Never had anxiety since. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. And that's the thing. You know what, right? I'll be honest with you, I think doing that saved my life. And like, I, do you know what's mad, right? I'm coming into the show, I was a bit worried about it because if you've seen any of the shows, they've all been like moaning about my kids and my, and my missus and all that shit. But now, I couldn't, I was coming into this thinking, what the fuck am I going to do here? Yeah. Because my missus is proper sound and I can't moan about my kids because they're actually quite sound and I fucking, like, <laughs> can't go on stage and go, everything sound, everyone sees later. <laughs> but it turns out, you know what? You can, you can come on, you can be happy and still be funny, it's fine. And you know what? That's been a big fucking revelation for me. And you know what, as well, I'm very proud of. I, I didn't even mean it. I wanted there to be some kind of message in this show. And I think if you really look deeply, there is one, right? <laughs> and I think it's this, it's that, if you think a make or money is ever gonna really make you happy, do you know what? It will. <laughs> it, I mean, it will. I'm not gonna stand here and say I'm fucking being rich isn't better than being skint. It's fucking well better. But what I will say is, if you're not happy deep down, it's not going to get you there. Do you know what, Will? Heavy psychedelics. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. And I do say that sitting here thinking, and I understand there's people in the room, that's not going to be for you, and that's absolutely fine. Although I do think you should have a go. Uh, <laughs> But you know what, really, Jenny, I think this is something everyone can strive for in the life. If you haven't got it, go out and find it. If you're not with a partner or a woman that you trust and love enough to stick a big dick up your ass. <laughs> you will never know true happiness, my friends. <laughs> so, Dublin, thank you so much for being lovely to me. You're like a second home, I'll be here next year. Until then, go off, eat mushrooms, get bummed. I love you all very much. Good night, everyone. Bye.